Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2019 documentary, The Hembry House. Uh, I sometimes get asked by my coworkers in my real job, uh, what... They they love my pain, and they'll ask me, you know, what is the ratio of good movies to bad that you typically watch? And here's the thing. Uh, I typically will seek out the lesser-known stuff. If you've watched this channel, you might at least see that. Uh, I don't really see a whole lot of benefit to being the 500,000th person to weigh in on the first Nightmare of Elm Street movie. I mean, if that's what you want to watch, and I'm serious about this, please let me know. Uh, but I get the feeling that uh, some of the... I, I like scraping the bottom of the barrel and finding some gems on, in, in there. Uh, but I found that more often than not, that ratio is skewed. And more often than not, when I scrape the bottom of the barrel, I just come up with a handful of muck. And, oh, this was this was muck. This was, uh, this was rough to get through. Uh... uh <sighs> Jeez. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so this follows uh, Tony Falosi and Thomas Markham from the Crypto Crew, uh, who I had no idea who they were. And after looking it up, it looks like they're a pair of amateur uh, cryptozoologists slash ghost hunters that have a small but loyal and fierce fan following on Facebook and their website and so forth. And they will periodically... Uh, compile some of their videos and turn them into a feature-length documentary and release them. Uh, ordinarily, this not, would not be one that makes my list of even something that's eligible to watch. However, it's currently available on Amazon Prime, and it has an IMDb page. So, I mean, by all rights, it is a released full-length motion picture. And on that note, I decided to give it a whirl and see if what it had to offer. Uh, and really, just not a whole lot. This was amateurish from start to finish. It really belongs in the video on demand kind of direct ship from the Crypto Crew VHS uh, library to their fans. Uh, but this made a, a fairly, I guess, at least wide release in the fact that it's out in the streaming world. Um, and I'll be honest, I really just don't think it belongs there. I don't, I, this isn't the kind of thing that I think would interest anybody that doesn't already follow the crypto crew. So this movie follows Tony Filosi and Thomas Markham as they go and visit the Hembry house, which is apparently a haunted house in Wallens Creek, Kentucky. And they do their ghost investigation there. And to get into uh, more depth on this one, I'm going to need to get into the categories. Now, the categories are slightly different than what you're used to. Uh, I first did a documentary when I reviewed Demon House, and I changed the categories up to reflect a more documentary style. So instead of having uh, you know, plot, intent, uh, acting, and so forth, I have premise, content, and interviews, respectively. So, as always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And... Now I can break down what the real problems of this movie was. First of all, as far as the premise goes, I still don't really know what they were trying to say. Uh, from a documentary standpoint, I think that there are really three E's that should be employed for the premise of the documentary. And, you know, it's like pick one or any combination of the three. Uh, educate, enlighten, and enrich. Uh, and this really does none of those. Uh, they go to the house and... They don't really come to any conclusions. They don't even really have any hypotheses. Uh, you know, the documentaries often will follow the scientific method. You know, they'll come up with their hypothesis. They'll come up with the uh, methodology to test the hypothesis, and then they'll come to their conclusions. And in this one, I didn't even really know what the hypothesis was, aside from find out the origins of this little girl spirit that's been sometimes seen in there. Uh, and in order to do that, they basically talk into uh, various boxes for an hour and a half. So I, I really can't give it a whole lot on the premise there. It's really, really weak. Uh, I, I, is it to prove that there are spirits out there? Is it to solve the mystery of the Hembry house? Is it, I still don't really know. Um, and, and as far as the content goes, that kind of comes down to uh, how they convey 
what they're going to be trying to convey. And for the most part, it's simply two guys in a static setting talking into various boxes. Some of them make noise, some of them don't. Um, and there's just not a whole lot to really go on there. As they're explaining to the spirits, you know, hey, this is a, uh, you know, Markham SB-17, which is slightly better than the Markham SB-15 because it uh, does two channels instead of one. They're explaining that to the spirits and to the audience at the same time, and I still don't know what the hell it means and why I should care. Uh, you know, it, it would be the kind of thing where, from a documentary standpoint, it would be good to take a step back, have a table laid out with the equipment. Uh, you know, okay, benefit of the doubt. I'm not really knocking ghost hunting necessarily, uh, but from just a documentary standpoint, have a table, have all the equipment laid out, go over it with the audience. Okay, well, we're going to do this one here, and this is ultimately what we're going to be trying to achieve with this one right here, and so on and so forth, and then employ it without getting, you know, too in the weeds on the technical bits that really don't add anything to the conversation. Uh, you know, again, educate, enlighten, enrich. That would be a component of that. Here are the tools that were going to be used to test our hypothesis and then see where we wind up with the conclusion. Uh, <clears throat> so it really wound up being very static and very boring. And as far as the content of them employing that goes, it follows a fairly <laughs> tried and true example of what I found by watching uh, ghost hunting videos. Uh, you know, some of them will ramp things up for the sake of uh, entertainment and so on and so forth, which I know is not really the purpose of a documentary, but even so, this really stretched the limits of the amount of how heavy my eyelids were going to get. Uh, it would be the kind of thing where, you know, the entire movie is them asking questions, you know, how old are you? What are you doing here? So on and so forth. And they're asking these questions into these boxes and they're getting back. What? Out in the woods? Let's go out in the woods. It just said. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's a foible of mine that I really don't really get behind a lot of this, but this is one of the more extreme examples of, uh, you know, taking the concept of ghost hunting and stretching it, uh, to the point of really testing my disbelief. Uh, <clears throat> it, you know, if your idea of two gentlemen speaking into boxes and getting nothing back for an hour and a half is your idea of heaven, then by all means, this is the movie for you. Uh, as far as the interviews go, I think that that's a critical component of a documentary is the interviews. <clears throat> Documentaries will typically follow uh, a, a trial, uh, as in like a, a you know judicial court trial format insofar as the documentary filmmakers are not really the ones that present the evidence to the audience. If you've ever actually been uh, witness to a trial as a juror, as well, hopefully not a defendant, but you know... It, the whole Hollywood thing of the lawyer saying, and this is the document here that will prove the so-and-so happened the so-and-so. That doesn't happen. They bring up, you know, if they're talking about, say, like a bad check or something like that, or if they're trying to prove financial fraud in the form of these checks, they'll bring up a banker. They'll bring up uh, a, a, a eyewitness, you know, somebody that was the recipient of the checks, and they will ask them, you know, can you describe the document that you have here? Okay. And they will have the interviewee, the, the per, you know, person providing the testimony, describe the document and then it'll be entered into evidence. And typically a documentary will follow that format. Instead of the filmmaker presenting the evidence, they will have an interview and talk with the people and have them present a lot of the evidence along with whatever they captured on camera. And this movie really didn't do that. Uh, and instead had the, uh, the, the filmmakers themselves describe the history of the Hembry House, describe what witnesses have seen, so on and so forth. They only had one real interview with a guy that had one of the most epically weird beards I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but for the most part, I would have loved to have them go to a local historian of uh, Wallens Creek, Kentucky, or that, that area, and sit down with them and have them describe the history of the Hembry House. I would have go to the librarians or go to, uh, you know, as far as like describing the ghost hunting things, sit down and talk with the person that developed this particular box that makes this noise. Something along those lines where they are actually a neutral party that operates behind the background as they get the information delivered to them by a neutral source or by a source that has that information as opposed to them just basically, here's what happened, here's what we're doing. It ultimately just makes a very bland format that is ultimately exposing itself to a high level of factual scrutiny. 
And that's the exact thing you want to avoid when making a documentary. Uh, as far as the technical goes, uh, this was just half-assed all the way. I really have no other way to say it. It was hackneyed. It was thrown together. Again, this was just the kind of thing that if you are already a fan of the Crypto Crew Productions, that you know what you're expecting, you might enjoy, and you might be willing to support them by paying $19.95 for a DVD sent to your home. Aside from that, I really don't see a whole lot of technical value in this one. Um, it, it was just very bizarre in their editing choices. They would have, uh, they would constantly be going back to a title screen of the Hembry House. You know, if you're making a feature-length documentary, you only need one title screen, if that, right at the beginning. Maybe right at the end, but it was constantly peppered throughout, and I really don't understand exactly why, other than maybe they were taking the snippets that showed up on their website and just shoving them together and tossing it out on DVD. Uh, but, you know, somebody would say, you know, a sentence, and then it would go to the title screen, the Hembry House, and show the outside, and it's, you know, cheesy font. And then somebody would say two sentences, and then it would go to the, the Hembry House title card. I just didn't, it, it was bizarre. It was bizarre to see this obviously thrown together PAP released as a feature length documentary with an IMDb page and an entry on Amazon Prime streaming. So that gives us a total of nine out of 100 points. I really just didn't see the value in this. I didn't see the purpose in this. And it was an absolute waste of time. This was me coming up with a fistful of muck when I scraped the bottom of this barrel. Um, and if I can dissuade anybody I'm that's I'm doing a public service announcement on this one. Uh, you know, I was ready to turn it off 15 minutes in and I decided, you know, I don't do reviews unless I watch them all the way through. So I did. I watched this one all the way through and it delivered absolutely nothing beyond that 15 minutes that that first 15 minutes already promised me. So this is my warning to the folks out there. Let me take this bullet for you. Let me <laughs> dissuade you. This is one to absolutely avoid. If watching something that has ghost hunting in it and, you know, watching people use technology to go to a haunted place and try to, to communicate with spirits goes, more power to you. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. But I think that there are much better examples and much better formats and much more compelling hosts and much better documentaries that will provide that for you than The Hembry House. So that should about do it. That's my review of 2019's The Hembry House. I really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon link is below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted. <laughs>